Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich here. Severe weather on the way today. It's a day you need to be weather aware. We are expecting some strong and severe storms to develop in the worst possible time around the evening commute, but also the peak heating of the day, which will provide fuel for these storms. Let's show you what's going on right now. Now you look back to the west and you immediately think, oh, here they come. Well, actually what I think is going to happen is the main severe line is going to form in here. This first batch is likely going to weaken. But what's interesting is the sun is coming out here. The sun is key today. I've had a lot of folks ask me about that. Why is the sun coming out bad? Well, remember, sun is heat, it's humidity, it provides instability. So we're starting to see dew points surge into the mid and upper 60s. You can see those dew points in the 60s, temperatures in the 70s. So as this clearing trend pushes north and we see the sun come out, and even for a couple of hours, that's gonna be bad news for the severe weather risk. That's actually gonna provide fuel for these storms. Here's the risk right now. You can see the severe weather risk today. Uh, we're in that medium to high range for just about everybody. And that means the risk for severe weather is around 30% for damaging winds, 15% for hail, 2 to 5% for tornadoes. We've reached that 30% threshold for wind is why this has gone up to the high range for us. And let me break this down a little bit better for you to kind of show you I'm kind of move my head down here this is the severe weather impact so tornado threat is in the medium range winds are in the high hail is in the medium and flooding is in that um in that low range i think we could see some minor flash flooding but these storms are going to be moving pretty quickly do not anticipate widespread issues so here's the tornado chances so these chances these numbers just to put them in perspective this is a chance of seeing a tornado within 25 miles of any point on the map and you're probably saying oh two to five percent is not bad remember this is not a rain chance <laughs> this is not you getting caught without an umbrella getting wet this is the chance of a tornado, okay? Um, this is much more uh, dire than the rain threat. So even though these seem small, these are actually significant because think about it, any given day, the chance of a tornado is close to zero. So 2% is actually two times higher. 5% is five times higher than a normal day. So you get the idea. This is a, a, a much bigger chance than it looks, appears on here. So what about the timing of this? Well. I'll really quickly show you this and I'll get into the radar here in a minute. I do think this is going to be a little slower than we anticipated yesterday by an hour or two. So I've changed these times just a hair. Noon to 3 for the mountains, 4 to 8 for the Piedmont, and then 8 to 11 for the eastern Piedmont, the Sand Hills, into areas heading off um, towards central North Carolina. That's the area that I think is going to be probably affected later this evening. Now, we talked about the tornado threat, the wind threat is up to 30%. This is why we've gone to the higher risk level today because the wind threshold has reached 30%, which is high enough to put us into that. And just real quickly, the hail threat is at 15%. So let's go back to the radar here and let's talk about how this is gonna unfold later this afternoon. Because what I think is gonna happen here is we're gonna see warm, humid air surging in. This first batch is gonna fall apart a little bit and we're gonna see this line move in. And it should move in as a broken line. But if we see individual cells develop ahead of it, we call those super cells, those could rotate. And that could be a significant problem. So let's look at some parameters here. We're gonna look at the tornado parameter real quickly here. I'm gonna pause this. Let me shrink this down just a little bit so it's easier to see. Got to grab my corner here. There we go. So this is the tornado parameter. I move my head down. So this morning we had uh, the warm front come through. This afternoon is interesting. You see the line approaching. And there's a couple areas to watch, Charlotte South and then just to the north. These aren't off the chart. This tells me whatever develops is probably going to be isolated, but potentially could be strong um, as it moves in. So if we look at the future radar here, we'll pause it. I'll kind of set this up for you. So this is th this morning. We go through time. You know, if we see the sun break out, let's say 11 a.m., noon, 1, sun starts heating things up. Here comes the line of storms back to the west moving in. So what I did here is I put the radar and the rotation tracks on here. Three o'clock, look at this little cell. Got to keep an eye on that. These little rogue cells out ahead of the main line, those are the type of cells you got to watch um, early, after, early to mid-afternoon. Then by late afternoon, the main line starts approaching. And you can see a couple of these cells. They're away from each other. They're more supercellular looking, which is always something I look for because those are going to be the ones that you know can produce tornadoes and stay with rotation for a while. And then you see the line moving up 85. Look at some of these rotational tracks. These are one hour rotation tracks, which means the storm is rotating the updraft. 
That doesn't always mean tornadoes, but it does mean the potential for severe because rotating storms tend to drive that warm, humid air high into the atmosphere where it's colder and you end up getting hail, damaging winds, and yes, tornadoes. So by seven o'clock, the one hour rotational tracks start really hinting at something coming up through here. And remember, this was an area too where the STP or the significant tornado parameter overlaid this area. So if I'm looking for areas where we're getting different parameters lying on top of each other, there's also another one right there and a couple up in here. So notice a lot of areas might be missed, but there's going to be a couple stronger storms. Now, again, when you look at this data, please don't say, Brad, look at this, seven o'clock, got a rotating storm over Rock Hill. Doesn't necessarily mean over Rock Hill, which you need to look at this and what I, the way I look at this and the way I think you should consume this is that we've got a couple rotating storms somewhere in this vicinity. And if I'm keeping an eye, I'm watching here and here within that area. So it kind of gives you, kind of narrows, it's a funnel. We're starting wide and as we get closer, we can start narrowing down where we're going to see the, the rotation and the storms. You see them moving through between eight o'clock. And again, look at this one north of Charlotte. So there's a, there's a couple rotating storms in and around the metro, and then they move off by nine o'clock, and then by 10 o'clock, they're off to the east, and by 11 o'clock, they're gone. That gives you a pretty good indication, you know, that they're gonna be out of here probably after 10 or 11. Now, on top of all this, we've got some strong environmental winds and low-level jet. And what I mean by that is, even outside of the thunderstorms today, um, as the storms move in, there's going to be something we call a low-level jet. It's the strong southerly winds that help feed these storms as well. That jet alone is going to produce 25 to 30 mile hour wind gusts. So like the Strawberry Festival, outdoor activities with temporary structure like tents and temporary things for outdoor festivals, they don't handle 30 to 35 mile hour winds, let alone severe winds. So that's why it's always important to think not always severe thunderstorms, just thunderstorms in general, you know, can take a trampoline away, take a tent, take a sign, um, and that could be dangerous if they blow around. And watch what happens as the front moves in. The individual storms produce some really strong winds as it moves through. It almost looks like a bow echo moving through. So you could see that four, five, six, seven o'clock in the evening, and then pushing off to the east. So as we always say, please have a plan. Make sure you have three ways to get a warning. One of the best ways to stay connected with us here at WCNC Charlotte. Our app, I'm, I'll promote this all the time, mainly because I use it. I mean, it gives you push notifications for a warning at your location of your phone. Again, remember, the goal is not to overwarn you. If you turn on notifications, make sure you have this follow you. So if you're traveling around the area today, if your phone is in one of those warning polygons, it'll go off. If you're outside, you shouldn't get the warning. Um, what I mean by that is if the warning is in North Charlotte and you live in South Charlotte, this will not go off because even though you're in Mecklenburg County, you're not in the warning. The other thing, you can stream our coverage here. So if you're away from home, you're in the carpool line, you're at dinner, um, you're in your shelter location, you can watch our live coverage right here on the phone. So again, please be weather aware today. We are under this risk for severe storms. It is a higher risk. We don't see maybe five or six of these a year, um, maybe 10. Um, this is the first real higher risk that we've had so far this year, and it does look like the ingredients are setting up. Of course, you know me. I will be posting all day long, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, WCNC.com, and our app. The app sends push notifications whenever I do an update, especially a vlog like this. We'll send you a notification. Be safe, be weather aware, and have a plan.